Hi there, folks. I'm Michael Vlaitis, the host for On Wine TV, the show that brings you the insider scoop on what's happening in the Ontario wine industry. So today we're in Niagara Falls, Ontario at the brand new Scotiabank Convention Centre, the host of the 2011 Niagara Food and Wine Expo. So we're going to go inside, we're going to try some great Niagara wines and some great local fare. So follow me and let's see what we got. I'm just gonna grab a glass here and then head on to the floor and uh, let's go see what we got because I'm getting thirsty. I don't know about you. Let's go. Ah, oh, here we go. Looks like we've got a couple good ones coming up here. I think I'm gonna try some Ravine there. Hi there, ladies. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. So, Ravine Vineyards located in St. David's Bench. What are you guys pouring today? Sounds great. I've definitely had that and it's one of my favorites. I haven't tried your Sauvignon Blanc, but I'd be able to try a little bit, please. Okay, so this is 2010. Yes. Wow, 2010. Nice, very fresh, very crisp, aromatic. A little bit of that gooseberry, which I get from some of the Negra on the Lake Sauvignon Blancs. That's nice, let's try it. Oh, wow, that's great. Very clean, nice and fresh. Lots of acidity. That's definitely a great summer wine, just in time for the hot summer we're looking forward to. That's awesome. Christopher, so what's your involvement here at the Scotia Centre today, and uh, where do you see this event going here in Niagara, and what's it going to do for our Niagara wine industry? Oh great. Uh, I guess my involvement, I, they call me a consultant, so I guess that means I do a bit of everything. But uh, my, my, the real, real close, really close to my heart is the, is the educational element of what we're doing here. And, and actually the very fact that it's here in Niagara Falls. I mean, Vines Magazine was born and bred in St. Catharines, Ontario. We were really just wanting to tell a story about Canadian wine in the early days and really celebrate the people who made it and the wine growers and, and everyone involved. And so the whole idea of this was to create a, uh, I guess just to celebrate the, the wine culture or the emerging wine culture of, of Canada and, and use Niagara Falls as this tourism destination where people who are coming here might not necessarily know there's a wine industry two feet down the road. A, I think as Ontarians, we don't know that Niagara Falls is this food and wine destination that the people are, you know, Jamie Kennedy's opening here in October not really well known yet but it's happening um, so we're seeing we're seeing this as being a real hotbed for foodies um, but we want to see wine kind of right there kind of le leveling off and, and being being as rich rich a, a experience for people as the food can be is there any wines I should try or anything to look out for here tonight I think uh, this is in many ways going to be seen as the coming out party for a couple of the new wineries, but uh, it's also a bit of a relaunch for Cornerstone, uh, the, the wines that Andre Lipinski has made with, with Jerry, the owner there, really worth, worth having a look at. Um, what I love is seeing, you know, I mentioned Derek Barnett already, but over at the Laley table, he's got his whole lineup of 2009 Pinot Noirs, so you, right from the uh, kind of Niagara Peninsula right through to his old vines, so you can have a nice little cross section and for not many tickets at all to have this nice little um, Tudor tasting of your own because Derek's pouring so you can hear right from him what it's all about, what influenced the brickyard, what influenced the uh, 
the, the Wismer Vineyard and what influenced his old vines and how he blended those components together to make the Niagara Peninsula. It's a great experience and I'm thrilled that he's actually here you know, giving of his time and talent to pour. So we're here at the Lely Vineyard booth and we've been lucky enough to have Derek Barnett, the head winemaker there, uh, talk to us and answer a few questions. So Derek, what's Lely Vineyards pouring tonight and uh, what should we look forward to uh, this weekend? I see we have a, a, a big array of uh, Pinot Noir. Uh, we have uh, five of the 2009 Pinots and uh, I think for me, 09 Pinot was the best maybe in the, in the last uh, 10, 15 years uh, coming from Lely Vineyard. Uh, we also have some new, uh, new vintage 2010 Sauvignon Blanc and uh, a really nice summertime white uh, made from Vidal. Oh, yeah. yes. Great. And what about the 2010 vintage? I know everyone was saying it's a great hot vintage, and we know for some of the bigger Bordeaux varietals. How's it looking for Chardonnay and Pinot, though? Pinot looks good, uh, and the Chardonnay, they got a little, uh, a little more texture, uh, uh, but it's still well balanced. Uh, one of the nice things about having Chardonnay and uh, growing in Ontario, we, we still maintain acidity, which uh, keeps, the, uh, keeps the wines fresh. So we're excited about what's coming down the pipeline. Yeah, I'm real excited to try this. Wow, that's great. Mm. Lots of that cherry fruit, but still lots of that earthiness and even a little bit of minerality. Mm. And a little bit of that funk, which I like from Lely's Pinots, they're great. Yeah, that's nice. That's why they're one of the best Pinot producers in Niagara on the Lake. That's amazing. Actually, we're here at the booth uh, with Kloss and Chase Winery from Prince Edward County, one of the better known wine producers from Prince Edward County. And we're here talking with Nick. So Nick, what are you folks pouring here today? What are you doing at the Niagara Food and Wine Expo? Oh, today we have uh, three different Chardonnays actually, two of which are from 100% uh, Niagara fruit. So it makes sense for us to showcase our Niagara uh, our grown uh, vineyards from uh, our wines from Niagara fruit, sorry. And we also have one from 100% Prince Edward County fruit. So all three Chardonnays are 18 months in French oak, barrel fermented, bar barrel aged. Um, they're uh, what we do best, I think, and what we're really focusing on at the winery. Uh, they're low yield, so intense wines. Okay, so right now we're trying the uh, Kevin Watson Vineyard Chardonnay. So the Chardonnay fruit is coming from uh, the Niagara on the Lake Appalachian, Niagara River, I believe. And uh, Kevin Watson's a great grower there. So let's give this a little try and see how it tastes. delicious. Mm. Wow, again, Kloss and Chase with their Chardonnays are just putting out some amazing wines. This one I'm finding a lot of that apple character, a little bit of that soft barrel notes, a little bit of that soft butterscotch. A little, definitely different from the um, Prince Edward County wine I just tried there, which had a little bit more of that minerality, a little bit more of that Prince Edward characteristics to it, but this is definitely a great showing coming from the Niagara Appalachian here. Now, I know you're a new winery. I know you've been growing grapes there for a while on your property. Um, what other wine should we look forward to from Hinterbrook? What we have released right now are our 2010 uh, Rosé, which is a single varietal Rosé made from Cab Franc. We also have a very unique wine that nobody in North America has made called Franc Blanc, and it is also made from Cabernet Franc, and it's as clear as a Chardonnay. You'll have to stop by and, and see how we do it. Mm. 